as my pal, the great world-renowned all-star copywriter Doberman Dan likes to say, I got one thing for you today. Michael McLean, BrassBallsVideos.com. You can subscribe for free for my daily broken iPhone videos at BrassBallsVideos.com. There's nothing to buy, just your name and email and you're good to go. I'll be in your righteous email box every single morning at 6 a.m. It is the cold hard truth about wealth, about health, and about happiness without the whiskey chaser. So I got one thing for you, as, or as Doberman Dan would say, I got one thing for you. And this is a short and sweet. I have one, one mission for you. One goal that I've been working on personally in my own business and professional world. And here it is. For the next 24 hours, do this one thing. Test it in your world and let me know how it goes for you, okay? Number one thing, one thing to do over the next 24 hours. No, absolutely no complaining. Absolutely no whining. Absolutely no excuse making. Zero, zilch, none. You can do it, I know you can do it. Admittedly, it's extremely difficult to not whine, to not complain, and to not make excuses. I am, to be, to be blunt, I am a, uh, I am a, uh, I, uh, my natural instinct is to, to, be, to be negative. That's, I've always been like that. I am always an accurate thinker. I'm not a positive thinker. I'm not a negative thinker. I'm just an accurate thinker. I adhere to the Napoleon Hill think and grow rich principle of accurate thinking. I see things exactly as they are. I see people exactly as they are. I do not see things as I wish they were or I think they should be. I see things clearly exactly as they are. So I'm an accurate thinker. But I can skew negative and that's when it's time for me to deputize my wife Krista or my 11-year-old daughter Emery where I go and I say to them, "Listen, I'm going to deputize you. I'm not I'm I'm done criticizing. I'm done whining, I'm done complaining." And this all this all comes on because as humans we get into bad habits, all of a sudden our language starts to become more negative, more cynical. It's just normal for small business owners. And the thing is, you need people in your world that'll hold you accountable and say, you know what? You don't normally talk like that. That's not you. That's not helpful. That's not accurate thinking. So whenever my language starts to slide, because language is so important, and my wife will hear me whining or complaining or even making an excuse. And that's swearing, that's cussing in our house. And Krista is the best detective when it comes to that stuff. And my 11 year old daughter, because I've deputized them now for years. And my Emery will say to me, she'll say, Daddy, that sounds an awful lot like an excuse. Or my wife Krista will say, well, that was a lot of whining and complaining about something you don't control. So when you deputize only the people in your world, it could be your best friend, secret weapon queen, it could be a brother, it could be a sister, it could be somebody, but they gotta be somebody that believes in you, that you trust, they're on your side, not anybody. It has to be an ally, it has to be your ally. So in my case, my ally is my queen Krista and my daughter Emery, and they hold me to a higher standard when it comes to the way I talk. If I'm whining or if I'm complaining or if I'm making excuses, boom, they're there. And I can course correct almost immediately because then they'll continue to watch. Man, that sounds an awful lot like whining and complaining. Wow, that's a pretty big excuse, daddy and it snaps, snaps, and wakes me up and wises me up. And then I become conscious of the language and the words that I'm using to talk to myself. Our words become our reality, okay? 
Bruce Lee 101. How you talk to yourself, even in a sarcastic, joking way, becomes your reality. Your prefrontal cortex, your subconscious mind, and your conscious mind can't tell the difference. So if you're in the toxic habit of talking badly about yourself, you might as well have somebody sitting in front of you tearing you down. The way you talk to yourself becomes your reality. So maybe it's time to deputize one of your allies or one of your children and to get serious about this one thing. To say, you know what, for the next 24 hours, I am not going to criticize. I am not going to be critical of somebody else. I am not going to tear somebody else down. If somebody asks me about something or someone, if I don't have something good to say, I'll remain silent. And no whining, no complaining, and no excuses. That's a personal law. That's my code of conduct, by the way. My hockey teams, we had one rule. No whining, no complaining, no excuses. The reason we had that rule with my insurance company, my barber shop, personally in our house with my hockey team, with my insurance employees, whining leads to excuses and excuses lead to what? Losing. That was the U.S. Men's Olympic uh, um, code of conduct back in the Vancouver Games when they lost the gold medal to Canada with that super powerhouse team that both Canada and the United States iced. And Brian Burke brought that in. A no whining, no complaining, no excuses policy with million dollar athletes because he said that was the only thing that could de derail them. Whining about the athlete's village or the size of the beds or the food or the cafeteria, any of that shit. That's how Team USA, that's how Team Canada, that's how you lose the Olympics with the best players. So Burke brought in a no whining, no complaining, no excuses policy. And it worked like magic. The only team that was better than the US by one goal that year was Team Canada when Sidney Crosby scored the overtime gold medal goal. But Burke believed that whining lead to complaining and complaining lead to excuses. And I agree 200%. So try that on for size for the next 24 hours. No tearing anybody down. No tearing anything down. No whining, no complaining, and no excuses. I had a friend who uh, was on my coaching staff with our Barkley Cup Championship Perth Blue Wings team. If I didn't hire this guy, he was our video coach, specialty teams coach, power plays, and... Uh, uh, penalty killing hockey wizard. His name is Jeff Jordan. He now coaches um, for uh, uh, he coaches in the American Hockey League, one level from the NHL, and uh, he's a video coach um, with uh, the St. Louis Blues uh, AHL team. And I remember because I was working with Jeff that year with the Perth team for the first time, and one thing that really stood out. And this will stand out if you do this as well for the next day, for the next two days, for the next seven days, and then let me know how it goes in the comments. Is Jeff Jordan had the inability, I'm not kidding, I've known the guy now for five years. He has the inability to tear anyone down. He has the inability to be critical or tear another person down. And I'll give you an example. I'll give you a short story of what I mean. Like, if you ask most coaches or most small business owners or most husbands or most fathers, you know, you'll ask them about somebody. They'll say, well, he's a, he's a good guy, but... And then they'll say something negative, something critical, something to tear him down. That's how the 99% normies, that's how they do it, right? They tear somebody down or they tear something down or they criticize something because in the end, subconsciously, they think it makes them look bigger and better when it does the exact opposite. When we're critics, we're at our lowest. When we're, when we're tearing people and things down, we're at our lowest. So Jeff Jordan, it was just amazing. I'd ask him about a player and he was an accurate thinker. He wouldn't bullshit me. He was just like, here's what this kid can do to help us win. And it'd be boom, boom, boom. And then I'd ask him about a fellow coach, which I mean, it's usually the Hatfields and McCoys, right? Hockey's the wild, wild west. You got the Hatfields and the McCoys between players, between coaches, between owners. 
not with Jeff. He was like, you know, that guy's a solid guy. He's really dedicated to his team. He's a solid coach. And he would always emphasize their strengths. And no matter who I asked him about, he was always, he always had this thing. He'd always say, good for him. I'd be like, did you hear that Jason Clark, my friend, got promoted to the American Hockey League? And he's like, good for Jason. Good job. And Jason was one of his longtime coaching rivals. That's like Jerry Jones, you know, speaking, speaking well about one of the other owners that he competes with. You know, it's just a totally different mindset. Jeff always saying good for him, good for her, good for him. And I've tried to adopt that and I've been working on it for the last month here. And I have to say it's making a massive difference. I'm instituting my own code of conduct, which I've had for a number of years, but I've had to redeputize my wife and my daughter and myself. And I have a hard and fast rule. No criticizing, no tearing something down, no tearing some person down. If I haven't got something good to say, I just shut my mouth about it. And that's how winners think. Winners focus on what? More winning. What do losers focus on? They focus on tearing down winners. They focus on tearing down success. Does that make sense? Like champions, champions in any field, whether they're an athlete, an artist, a musician, an entrepreneur, a husband, a father. Champions, champions, okay, they want you to win. Champions, all the great winners and champions that I've been around, the cleaners, the closers, the rainmakers, they all want people around them to do well. They want their employees to do well, their managers to do well, their families to do well. They want even their competitors in some cases to do well. They want more winning. They realize that there's such a thing as karma and energy and they literally want more winning. But winners want more winners. Winners love other winners. They may be fierce, fierce competitors, but champions love other champions. At least, at least they respect them. And losers, losers, tomato cans and losers and excuse makers and do nothings, the poodles in today's world, they tear down winners. They tear down the builders. They tear down the doers because that's the only way they can make themselves feel better by tearing down other people that are doing better, tearing down people that have the balls to do what they don't, tearing down things that they would never have the guts to, you know, to organize or create or build. So always keep that in mind when it comes to how you talk to yourself and how you talk to other people. When you're asked a question about somebody or something, are you a 99% normie who tears things down, tears people down, is whining, complaining, and making excuses? In other words, you're like a, most people are radioactive to be around. I don't want anything to do with these toxic people. They're time vampires, they're energy vampires. I want nothing. They walk into a room and they literally suck the fucking life out of it. And then you have the one percenters, the winners, the champions, the builders, uh, the cleaners, the closers. When they walk into a room, they fill it with energy. They fill it with fire. They fill it with enthusiasm because winners want what? They want more winning and they're happy when people are successful. They're happy when their employees are winning. They're happy when people make more money because they know that abundance breeds abundance. They know that a rising tide lifts all boats, right? And that's what your language will come down to. Scarcity versus abundance. Like when a guy like Jeff Jordan says, good for him, good for him. I'm happy to hear that he's doing so well. Good for her, I'm glad they're doing so well. Good for them, I'm glad they're enjoying, you know, living in wherever. He knows that it's all about abundance. By him praising somebody and saying something good about them, it's not, it's not taking something away from him. It's not making him look like less. It's actually doing the opposite. It makes him look like a champion. It makes him look like a massive winner, which he is. And it's all because of his language and how he talks about other people. Winners want other people to win. 
losers want other people to lose. That's my one thing challenge for you over the next day, over the next two days, then over the next seven days and see how long you can go. And then if you can comment in the comments below, subscribe to the channel if you find value, but put in the comments there, you know, how many times did you mess up? I messed up a whole bunch of times the first few days. My wife held me accountable. My, uh, my daughter held me accountable in the journal at night before I went be to bed. Beside my bed, I wrote down the three or four times I was negative or I made excuses or I, or I tore myself or, or I tore somebody else down, any of that toxic stuff. And then gradually, day after day, week after week, it's a habit now where I'm just automatically back to my championship language, my winner's language. Winners want people to win. Losers want people to lose. Get that in your mind and make the course correction today and let me know how this one thing goes in your badass world. Two words that change my life, two words that'll change yours. Be relentless.